Hello! <laughs> Today we're going to be going through seven different levels of camp sleeping pad. And I think this is going to be really fun, especially for you gearheads and campers out there. And it's going to be interesting partially because two of them are not sleeping pads at all. They're actually different types of camping beds, and we're going to be ordering them roughly in order of least comfortable to most comfortable. So starting on level one will be the least comfortable, and then level seven will be the most comfortable camp bed that I have ever used. So let's jump in with level number one. Here we are at level one. This is your classic closed cell foam sleeping pad. And if you don't know what I mean by closed cell foam, that's actually going to become important later because we're going to see some open cell foam sleeping pads later on. But basically all that closed cell foam means is that it's foam solid throughout without any holes in the middle. And the open cell foam on the other hand is foam that has holes in the middle in order to allow you to inflate it more with air. And so we'll see a couple examples of that actually later on. And so a closed cell foam pad like this is typically going to be sort of at the lower end of the price range, which means if you're a first time sleeping pad buyer or if you're just a budget shopper, then oftentimes you're going to buy something like this. And uh, yeah, so this is level one. Another thing to keep in mind if you're shopping for one of these is uh, to pay special attention to the length because you might notice here that uh, this does not fit my entire body length and I'm five foot ten for reference. And so if I was shopping for a pad like this, I would want to make sure that the height measurement of the sleeping pad is long enough for me. Now that's not to say that you can't get by with a partial body sleeping pad like this. In fact, I've used one similar to this or another partial size sleeping pad on many, many nights of camping. Uh, but it is worth knowing if you want to make sure that you have extra insulation down by your feet. And so that is level one, a quick summary. Let's move on to level two. And for level two, we have something just a bit different. So this is also a closed cell phone sleeping pad, but this one, folds up kind of like an accordion, right? It's got like a rectangular shaped fold to it. And this is actually really handy because if you compare this to like the, the roll-up sleeping pad we saw just a minute ago, those can tend to be a little bit unruly and they want to unfurl all the time, which means you might have to like tie a rope around it or use a rubber band or something like that. And with these ones that fold up, you don't need to do that because they just fold more naturally. And because of the fold, you also get another advantage. And this is something that like backpackers and through hikers often use is if you fold it kind of like this, you can use it both as a sleeping pad, but then when folded like this, you can use it as a camp seat. So you just kind of do that, and now it's a chair, right? <clears throat> and this is something that wouldn't work nearly as well with that, that roll-up version we saw a second ago. And so that's another thing to it, but one more thing that I want to mention about both this level two pad and the one that we saw in level one is that uh, a, closed cell, a closed cell foam sleeping pad like this will typically have an R value rating of around two. And of course, that can vary depending on the exact pad that you get, but with an R value rating of about two, that's gonna be good for like summer camping, but it probably won't be very good for colder or fringe season camping. And so if you don't know what R value is, I'll just kind of give you a brief explanation of what it is right now. R value is basically just a standardized metric that is used by manufacturers to rate the amount of insulation provided by a sleeping pad. And so if uh, the, the math is actually pretty easy the way that they've set this up, if you have a sleeping pad with an R value of two, and then you compare that sleeping pad with another one, we'll call it sleeping pad B, with an R value rating of four, then that means sleeping pad B has twice as much insulation provided compared to this one, or, or sleeping pad A, we'll call it, right? Because two times four is double, and so that's kind of how the math works. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions about that in the comments. And now let's move on to level three. Level three might be a bit of a surprise to you, and it is the classic big air mattress that you might have in your basement or garage that you bought years ago because somebody came to visit you and you didn't have a place for them to sleep. So you went to Walmart or Target or something like that and you bought a big air mattress like this. And a lot of people I know also will use a big air mattress like this when they go car camping. And so I thought it was worth including in the list. And there are a few pros and cons when it comes to this type of air mattress for camping. So first of all, if you want to put like sheets on your bed you want to have like real sheets from home and put your blankets and things that you would normally use a bed like this is going to be pretty much your only option so that's like the main benefit of a bed like this and if you compare the level of comfort of an air mattress like this one to even the closed cell foam pads that we covered a moment ago it can be pretty debatable depending on your personal preferences and depending on the particular air mattress and sleeping pad that you're comparing another thing that's worth thinking about is a big air mattress like this would seem like it probably has really good insulation because it's just huge, right? Like look at how big it is compared to those sleeping pads from level one and two. 
However, it's important to keep in mind that insulation basically is something that's catching or, or reflecting the heat from your body um, and, and bringing it back to you. So it's preventing that body heat from going from your body down into the ground. And with a closed cell foam sleeping pad, for example, there's this big layer of foam that's keeping that heat in. Whereas with something like this, oftentimes with an air mattress, you have a thin layer of plastic, a whole bunch of air, and then another thin layer of plastic. And so depending on the make and the model and what you're comparing it to, this actually might have less insulation than a different sleeping pad that has more insulation, right? And so it's important to think about that and not just to assume that this is gonna be super warm just because it's big. And one more thing that I'll throw in about this big air mattress is that you'll probably notice it's really wide. So if you're a type of person that likes to move around in your sleep or if you plan to share the bed with somebody else, then you might find this larger size to be appealing, right? And uh, there are limited options when it comes to getting a camping sleeping pad or mattress that will fit two people or is just larger for you to move around in. And this is one of them, just getting your big, this is a queen size air mattress from a big box store, but there are other options and we're actually gonna see another one at level seven. That level seven mattress that we're gonna get to is uh, rated for two people. And so stay tuned to see that because I think you'll like that a lot better than this one when it comes to comfort overall. Level number four is the self-inflating sleeping pad, also called an open cell foam sleeping pad. And this is actually the sleeping pad that I've used the most on this list. And if you were to cut the sleeping pad open, what you would see in there would be foam, but also holes and gaps in between the foam so that you would be able to inflate it more with air. That's kind of how one of these works. And uh, this model that I have is the Thermarest ProLite 4. And this is a pretty old one. I've had this for about 10 to 15 years. And I've actually taken this backpacking. I've taken it car camping. I've taken it even on a cross country bicycling trip from California to Florida, believe it or not. And I slept on this most of the way of that trip. And so I've used it in a lot of different applications. And I think that's just a testament to how versatile a pad like this can be. And since I have such an old model, you actually can't buy this specific model of pad anymore unless maybe you buy it used or something like that. And so I'm gonna instead compare it with uh, specs that come from a current model that you can buy today because that'll probably be more useful to you. So what you can still buy today is the Thermarest ProLite Plus. And that is very similar to this sleeping pad. And it has an R value of 3.2. And so if you remember back from the closed cell foam examples we saw in level one and two, those typically have an R value of around two. And at 3.2, something like the ProLite Plus uh, open cell foam sleeping pad is gonna have a bit more than 50% more insulation and more warmth than those earlier levels of sleeping pad that tend to be around two. And so it tends to be a warmer pad. I think it is definitely and by far the most comfortable pad that we've seen so far. But let's also talk about the weight of this pad. So this weighs, or I should say the ProLite Plus model weighs about one pound and seven ounces. And so that puts it in the range where you could take it on a backpacking trip. And like I said, I have used this specific pad on several backpacking trips and it's worked really well. But if you are an ultra light type person, that could be a bit of a downside because you can get air only sleeping pads that weigh less than a pound. And so that extra weight could be a problem for you. Uh, but something, something else I wanna mention is the price point of a pad like this. So if you buy the ProLite Plus regular size, that's gonna cost you about $120 from Thermarest. And I think that does make this type of pad kind of the entry point into what I would consider the premium tier of sleeping pads. Everything that we've seen so far in levels one through three has been squarely in the budget zone, I think. And so we're getting into kind of the really nice quality premium tier sleeping pads now. And I think that this is a, a really good example of that. And uh, this is a, a really, I think, versatile pad because you can take it on such a variety of trips. And one more thing I wanna mention before we move on to the next level is you might notice that this Thermarest is in some sort of like case, like it's in kind of some kind of sleeve here. And what this is, if you've never seen one of these four, this is actually an add-on that you can buy that allows you to take your Thermarest and, or your, your other sleeping pad, whatever brand you use, and turn it into a chair. So it has straps here, I won't do them now to save time, but you can turn it into a chair. And this is really great if you're going on a backpacking trip or something like that, where you might not have a separate chair with you, you can just use your regular sleeping pad, turn it into a chair, and then you're good to go. And if you've been enjoying this video so far, please do hit the like button for me. A video like this does take me quite a bit of work to do, and so just seeing those likes on the video gives me motivation to make more of them. So just take a minute and do that for me if you don't mind, and thanks in advance. Level number five is an air pad. So there's no foam in this in the inside, and it's also not an air mattress. This is a proper sleeping pad for the outdoors, but it's completely filled with air, therefore people call it an air pad. And so I should mention right off the 
the bat that there is a huge spectrum of different types of air pad. You have luxurious car camping air pads, and then you also have ultralight backpacking air pads. And depending on the particular air pad, you can pair with something like an open cell phone sleeping pad from the previous level. If you compare them, the level of comfort will be debatable. And if I were just to compare the sleeping pad from level four with this specific model that I have here, I think that this previous level is actually probably a little bit more comfortable. However, this type of sleeping pad opens a lot of different options from like a feature and tech spec standpoint. And so I thought it was worth listing at level five, especially because depending on what you get, it might actually be more comfortable. And so let's get into some of the details of what makes this type of sleeping pad so useful. So first of all, I should tell you the particular example that I'm looking at here today. So this is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite sleeping pad, which is one of the best backpacking sleeping pads currently on the market. And it has an R value of 4.2. And so if you remember from level one and two, that sleeping, those sleeping pads typically have an R value of around two, which means this is more than double the insulation or the warmth of those sleeping pads. And if we compare it to the previous level, the open cell phone sleeping pad there, this has around 35-ish more insulation than that previous pad does. And so that's one of the big benefits, but another one of the huge benefits is how lightweight and compact a sleeping pad like this one can be. So if we talk about this specific model, it weighs about 12.5 ounces if you get the regular size, which is what this is. And if you remember from the previous example, the, uh, the ProLite uh, Plus, the ProLite Plus Thermarest that we talked about, this is just shy of being half as heavy as that sleeping pad. So at 12.5 ounces, you're saving, what, about 11 ounces, I think, don't quote me on that, but about 11 ounces of weight compared to that previous level sleeping pad. And that is a huge deal if you're an ultralight backpacker trying to save weight. But there are a few downsides when it comes to this type of a, a pad, and one of them is the price. So this is a very expensive sleeping pad. It costs about $200 if you get the regular size that I have here. And another downside is that it tends to be a little bit less durable than an open cell phone sleeping pad like the one we covered previously. And I think the, the main reason for that is just because there's no foam on the other side and it's like a 100% air pad. And so you're inflating it more with air, which gives you a bit more of a puncture risk. And so I think this sleeping pad tends to be pretty durable, but if you compare like over a long extended amount of use, how much damage this pad gets compared to something like a, a premium, open cell phone sleeping pad like we what we talked about in the previous level, then I think you're probably gonna get more damage on a pad like this. And then one more downside that I should mention is because of the material they make these air pads out of, sometimes they tend to be a bit crinkly. And so you might be able to hear it in my microphone, but it tends to make like a bit of a crinkly sound when you lay down on it. So if you're a really light sleeper and you're bothered by sounds when you're trying to sleep, or if you go on trips often with somebody who is bothered by that kind of a noise, you should bear that in mind before buying an air pad like this. So anyway, air pads have a lot of options, a lot going for them, but they also have some downsides. That's level five. Level number six is a really interesting one, and this is actually a cot. It's not a sleeping pad at all, but if you are a sleeping pad primary person, then don't go away, because I've actually always been a sleeping pad first person as well, but this cot is actually really incredible, and I kind of just lucked into this, actually. You might be able to see the little patches here, but I was a, an assistant scoutmaster for the National Boy Scout Jamboree, and the company was giving away some of these to the volunteer leaders for free, and so I got one of them for free. And when I tried it out, it was just incredible. And there's a couple unique things about this cot compared to other cots, and so let's have a look at them. Number one, this is the camo cot from the company Disco Bed. And the reason it's a Disco Bed, as you can probably see at the corners, there's these black discs. And what that allows you to do is you have this canvas in the middle that's almost like a hammock canvas, but then when you slide it down in the frame, it creates tension, which gives you like the support for the, for the cot. And so that's interesting, but another thing that that does for you is you may have seen like folding cots that fold in the middle. They often have like a seam that goes right down the middle. And I've had a, a cot like that and I slept on it and that seam was right in the middle of my back and it was really uncomfortable. But with this cot, you don't have that. And this is a, just a really, really comfortable cot, I think. And it's also a, a pretty, pretty unique thing if you look at uh, the cot at overall because it also has a, a feature as an add-on that you can get for this that makes it into a bunk bed. So it has some components that you can add to this where you actually have cot bunk beds, which is really cool. Uh, but the downside of this pad, of course, or this cot rather, is that it's extremely heavy. Like it's this big middle frame. And so if you're doing any type of backpacking or if you need to carry your gear any more than like a few steps from your car, then this is not gonna be the, the thing for you, right? You're gonna want something else. But another advantage of having a cot over those sleeping pads 
is when you're getting out of bed, you don't have to stand up as far, right? You have a little bit of a head start, which can be nice. And it also is elevated off of the ground, which some people I think would like that. So it's a bit elevated off the ground. And I've actually used this as like my full-time bed at home for a few weeks actually when I was moving one time. And it was great, I slept pretty well and uh, it held up good for that. And so if you can use it for your bed at home, then I think that's pretty good for a comfort ranting. Anyway, this is the Camo Cot by Disco Bed. I did a full review of it actually, and I'll put a card in this video so you can go check that out if you want. But uh, I think this is a really cool cot. I've used it a lot and uh, that's level six. Welcome to level seven. This is the most comfortable camping bed of any kind that I have ever used. And this is technically an open cell foam sleeping pad, also called a self-inflating sleeping pad. However, it takes the whole thing to sort of an extreme. And so it is different than that level five open cell foam sleeping pad that we saw. So as you can see, it's just like way, way thicker and it's got a lot more foam in it and you could put a lot more air in it. In fact, it comes with, when you buy it, it comes with a little uh, inflating pad to help you blow it up, which does take some time. But this specifically is the Xped Duo 10 medium size. And uh, let's run through some pros and cons of the sleeping pad. Pro number one, it's insanely comfortable, right? And I actually like this sleeping pad so much, I liked it more than my regular bed at home. And so I started using, about a, a year and a few months ago, I started using this as my primary bed at home. And so I sleep on this like currently every night as my primary bed because I like it so much. And I think I've slept uh, over 400 nights on the sleeping pad. I've slept in a tent on it, but I sleep on it a lot even at home because it's so darn comfortable. And so that's one thing. Another thing that's like a pro of this is um, if you are looking for a, a well-insulated sleeping pad that's gonna keep you warm even in like cold winter temperatures, this has a very high R value of 8.1 which as you might remember from our earlier sleeping pads we covered is like super, super high compared to the Thermarest ones that we looked at that were like 4.2, 4.4. Like this is a really well insulated sleeping pad if you just need something to keep you warm. Another nice thing about it, if we compare it to something like the cot that we saw earlier is this is big and this is bulky, but if you compare it to a big metal cot, it is easier to roll up and put away and carry around than something like that cot. Now for the downsides of this, this is quite expensive. This is not a cheap sleeping pad. These sell in this size for about $329, I think it is. But if you wanna size up to an even larger size of this, then it's gonna cost you over $400, I think. So it's not cheap, but it is super comfortable. And uh, another thing that I'll just mention quickly is it obviously wouldn't be something you could take backpacking. And so if you want a backpacking sleeping pad or something that can be dual purpose that you would use both for backpacking and car camping, this just simply won't work. But if you wanna do car camping and you wanna do it real comfy, then this Xped Duo sleeping pad is really incredible for that. And in fact, I'm thinking about doing a full review of the sleeping pad. And so if you would be interested in that, let me know in the comments down below that you wanna see that so that I can pay attention to it. Now that has been my seven levels. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't done that already. And I hope to see you next Wednesday for our next video. Bye now.